I'm Jancy Despain with Bright Idea Tutoring. This video is a quick tutorial on enols and enolates, and I'm specifically going to focus on the mechanism of formation of enols and enolates, because most students can take a ketone or aldehyde, in this case we have an aldehyde, and form its enol or enolate ion. Just for a quick review, here's our carbonyl. That makes this the alpha carbon. And all we're going to do is remove a proton from the alpha carbon. We're going to form a double bond between the carbonyl carbon and the alpha. And in the case of an enol, we're actually taking this proton and moving it up to the O. This is a true tautomerization. In the case of an enolate, we're leaving this O negative. Let's do quickly talk about tautomerization and the concept of tautomers. These two molecules are tautomers of each other, and what tautomers are is just constitutional isomers that can be interconverted in a chemical reaction. I prefer to think about tautomerization as it's sort of like resonance, except atoms are allowed to move too. So let's think about these two structures, but let's remove this H. If this H was gone, this would be a carb anion. And same thing over here, if this H was gone, this would be a negative O. And now check out these two. They're not tautomers anymore, they're resonance structures. See, we can take this electron pair and move it right here and push these electrons up onto the O. And now we've formed a double bond here and a single bond to O. These are true resonance structures by all definitions of the word resonance. But before, when we showed them as tautomers, they weren't true resonance structures, because in resonance structures, atoms aren't allowed to move. So as soon as we take away the resonance concept and put this H back on here, they're not resonance structures anymore, they're tautomers. Now, what I'm gonna focus on again in this video is the true mechanism of formation of enols and enolates. And the reason why this is so important is because First of all, you're going to be asked to do these mechanisms, mechanisms on your exams. But more importantly, because these mechanisms are going to lead into other more difficult reactions like aldol condensations, glacid condensations, acetoacetic ester synthesis, and so on. So it's really important you have a good grasp on the way that these work and feel really comfortable with them so that you can do the harder stuff later on. So let's get started. In the presence of acid, we're going to form an enol. So the first step in this process is protonation. And of course, we always protonate the carbonyl. So we're gonna show our carbonyl O going out to grab a proton. And here's our protonated carbonyl. Now our next step is to remove an alpha hydrogen. So here's our carbonyl, that makes this our alpha carbon. And we have two alpha hydrogens. And we need a nucleophile to come and get this alpha hydrogen. And really the only nucleophile we've got is water. So I'm going to let water come and grab this alpha hydrogen. And then what we're going to see is electron flow. This is probably the hardest part of this mechanism. So as a result of this hydrogen being grabbed, these electrons are going to go form a double bond right here and push these electrons up onto O. And I like to think about this in terms of the E2 reaction. When our hydrogen is grabbed, these electrons go in to form a double bond, and we're kind of pushing off our leaving group. And as a result of this, what we're going to see is this proton is still here. The double bond is formed between the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon. And now we have only a single bond here between our O and our carbon and we formed an enol. And incidentally, this is called an enol because it's the combination of an alkene, alkene is the ene, and an alcohol, that's the all part of enol. Enols can also be formed in basic solution. In this case, the first step is that your base is gonna grab an alpha hydrogen. So here's our carbonyl, that makes this our alpha carbon, and here are our alpha hydrogens. Our base is just going to come and grab this guy. And this is called abstraction of the hydrogen. The base just wants to take that hydrogen and run away with it. It doesn't need these electrons. 
So that means these electrons can go right there and sit on carbon. That's going to form a carb anion. So here's our carbonyl. There's still one hydrogen attached. And now we have a carb anion that's going to give us a negative charge. Our next step is resonance. And this is really similar to the resonance that I showed you a few minutes ago to sort of uh, compare resonance to tautomerization. These electrons are going to go right here to form a double bond, and that's going to force these electrons up onto our O. And you'll see now a single bond to O, a double bond between our carbons, and only our H. This is called an enolate ion. Now, if we want to truly make this an enol, all we've got to do is protonate this O. So we're going to get an H from water. Notice we made water here when our base grabbed an H. And now we truly formed an enol. Now really what's the most important concept that you're going to need to learn for this chapter and for all of the future reactions that you're going to be doing is not so much the formation of an enol in base, but rather the formation of the enolate in base. And you already know how to form the enolate because it's right here. So to form the enolate, all you really need to do is stop at resonance and just don't do the protonation. So we'd stop right here at this structure. And really, the enolate ion is the resonance hybrid of these two structures, the carb anion and the true enolate itself. But this enolate is the one that exists the vast majority of the time. The reason for that is because here the negative charge is on carbon, here the negative charge is on an oxygen, and we want the negative charge to be on the more electronegative atom because that is more stable. So this is by far the more stable compound, or the more stable resonance structure. So this is the one that's going to exist the majority of the time. And that means that if this structure is going to attack something, the attack is going to come from this structure. And just a little bit of a preview, you're going to be doing a lot of uh, reactions where the attack or the addition is going to come on the carbon. And so you're going to want to attack from this structure because that's where the negative carbon is. You can't do that. You always have to have your attack come from here because again, this is the more stable structure. Here's an important consideration when you're forming an enolate. We say that the first thing we need to do is take a proton from the alpha carbon. But what if you have two alpha carbons? Here's our carbonyl. We have an alpha carbon here and an alpha carbon here. If we remove the proton from this alpha carbon, then we're going to get this product, which yields to these two resonance structures. If we take a proton from this alpha carbon, then we're going to get this enolate product with those two resonance structures. And they're very different. And in fact, they would go on to yield very different reactions that would add to two different alpha carbons. So which one are we going to pick? It actually depends on the base that you choose. Most of the bases that you've seen so far have been sort of medium strong bases like alkoxides and hydroxides. Those are typically not hindered. I'm going to write them here. So your alkoxide bases and hydroxide are going to tend to take a proton from the more hindered alpha carbon and give you what's called the thermodynamic product. And you may remember the thermodynamic product from other chapters. The thermodynamic product is the one that gives you the most stable carbon-carbon double bond. If you want to get this product, it's called the kinetic product. And the kinetic product is the one that gives you the most stable intermediate. In this case, the intermediate that we have is a carb anion intermediate. And you may be thinking, now wait a minute, that's a primary carb anion. Primary is not stable. You're thinking about carbocations. Carbocations are more stable the more substituted that they get. 
but carb anions are more stable when they're less substituted. So actually this primary carb anion is more stable than the secondary carb anion. So this is the kinetic product because it has the more stable intermediate, a primary carb anion. And the way to get the kinetic product is to use a really strong bulky base. And the one that's usually used for aldol reactions is called LDA. One more quick note about enols and enolates. Not all ketones and aldehydes can become enols or enolates. They have to have alpha carbons that have alpha protons. Here's our ketone. Here's our alpha carbons. There's no proton here and there's no proton here. That means that in our first step of the mechanism, no alpha proton can be taken. So this mechanism can't occur. That means that this reaction is impossible and this compound can't form an enol or enolate. And this is gonna be important for later reactions as well. So again, be aware that just because you have a ketone or aldehyde doesn't mean you're gonna get an enol or enolate. Once you've understood this mechanism and you understand how to make enols and enolates, it's time to move on to the reactions that you can do with enols and enolates. There's going to be alpha additions, um, aldol condensations, clays and condensations, and my video series is going to cover all of these. So make sure you like and subscribe and watch all my videos. Thanks for watching.